All right, let's get started. <clears throat> My name is Shelby Figueroa, and I welcome you here to our open studio, Creativity and Mental Wellness, which is pre presented by Harmonic Changes Therapy Services. And that's me, <laughs> another picture of me. Um, I am a music therapy intern as well as a registered nurse. So welcome to those uh, watching, whether you're watching later on YouTube or here right now. Um, the purpose of the open studio, which happens uh, the last Wednesday of each month for Harmonic Changes Services, is kind of in line with the vision, connect, inspire, change, and grow. This is a place for us to share our passions. And of course, we are always open to hearing new ideas and things that you would like to hear about. Um, we will not be meeting in November and December of 2021, uh, and we'll be restarting in January, again, the last Wednesday of each month at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So in addition to being a music therapy intern, uh, a registered nurse, singer-songwriter, I have also been on this lifelong path uh, towards desiring greater mental wellness um, and discovering what that means. And so for me, uh, not just for me, but my for my community, and what I have discovered is it's through creativity. So I am very excited to share this subject with you and explore it with you because it is near and dear to my heart. So here are the goals of today's presentation to explore what it means to be creative. Um, we have to start there because there are quite a bit of societal myths out there which end up being barriers to the real connection of creativity. So we'll take a moment to explore that. Secondly, we will identify the links between creativity and mental health, uh, the true links, disproving the idea of the unhealthy artist or the mad artist, um, which again is a trope keeping us from creativity's true meaning. And lastly, to share practical ways to engage with creativity. I am all about practical. If it's not something that I can add to my daily life or it's not something that will positively add to my life, I don't wanna hear about it. Um, so I'm hoping to give you something or share something with you that you can take away and add to your life in a real way. So with that, we will begin this journey. What is creativity? Or what is its common definition? Um, so of course I started this exploration um, where I think a lot of us do, Google. What is creativity? Uh, yeah, like what does it mean? And it was pretty interesting to see the definitions of what came up. From the dictionary, Collins Dictionary. A creative person has the ability to invent 
and develop original ideas, especially in the arts. We'll say that again. Creative person has the ability to invent and develop original ideas, especially in the arts. So possible barriers uh, because of the language that's used, invent, yikes. Creating something that hasn't existed before, that can be difficult. <laughs> I don't know if that's for me. Hmm, inventing. All right, original, something that hasn't existed before, hasn't been influenced. Wow, hmm, to be original. That's a pretty big, a pretty, a pretty big idea. And how can we be original today? And then lastly, where it says, especially in the arts. So that makes me think again, is creativity only within the arts? Um, is that the most important expression of creativity? What about science? Is that considered an art problem solving? So of course I've started with this question and now I have more questions. I don't know about that. All right, well, I'll, I'll look somewhere else. Let's go to Wikipedia, a favorite. Okay. Creativity is a phenomenon. All right, already having trouble there. Whereby something somehow new and somehow valuable is formed. All right, phenomenon, something remarkable. Okay, so I'm already, already starting to think, hmm, maybe creativity isn't accessible based on these descriptions. And then somehow valuable. So is it only creativity when it's valuable? Who creates this value? So again, this is leading us to believe some myths that we're gonna challenge. Here are the myths. That creativity is a rare gift. Nope, we're kicking it out of here. Uh, this was already disproved by the NASA creativity test, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, we are all creative, we are born creative, and this study uh, that I'm going to share, we'll, we'll talk a bit about that. All right, creativity is solely about artistic expression. Hmm, nope, we're kicking it out of here too. Ideas, solutions, creative problem solving, finding new ways to solve old problems. That can be creative. Next, you're either born creative or not. That's some interesting thinking there. A common polarizing idea. You either have it or you don't. It's kind of reminding me of like a fixed mindset um, as opposed to a growth mindset. We are all curious, we're imaginative, and creativity is really just taking that next step. Creative ideas must be original, ugh. <laughs> Again, what is original? This quote comes to mind um, by the filmmaker Jim Jarmusch. I'm gonna read it. Nothing is original. Steal from anywhere that resonates with inspiration or fuels your imagination. Devour old films, new films, music, books, paintings, photographs, poems, dreams, random conversations, architecture, bridges, street signs, trees, clouds, bodies of water, light and shadows. Select only things to steal from that speak directly to your soul. If you do this, your work and theft 
will be authentic. Authenticity is invaluable. Originality is non-existent. And if you don't bother concealing your thievery, celebrate it if you feel like it. In any case, always remember what Jean-Luc Godard said, it's not where you take things from, it's where you take them to. So we are all influenceable beings and influential beings, being able to influence each other towards more growth, goodness, and the possibilities are truly endless. And lastly, one last myth, a uh, creative myth that people get more creative um, ideas under the influence of alcohol or marijuana. So to talk about this one, um, when we are numbing ourselves, we are disconnecting from our intuition. So we're not seeing the real benefit of the creative process, which is ultimately connecting with ourselves. Um, now, using those substances may ease your, your super ego a bit, um, that part of our ego that likes the rules uh, temporarily, but after the first glass or dose, we're fighting the clock before lethargy appears, before we get tired, and that power of creativity slowly floats away. So our creative myths here. Let's move away from those and get to the creative truths. Creativity as a life affirming force. Hmm, let's think about that for a second. Creativity as a life affirming force such an open and big idea that creativity is really the act of turning new um, and imaginative ideas into reality. It's finding hidden patterns, um, making connections where there seem to be none, guiding life in a way um, where like allowing life to find its way, channeling our imagination into our creations. I don't know why I just had a, a thought of a Jurassic Park, life finds a way. And we're, we're just a part of that, a part of that process. Um, and so when I say this word creation too, uh, I'm really meaning anything. Um, this can be the way you read your children bedtime stories with fresh invention, uh, how you experiment in the kitchen, the way in which you choose to present your lectures, presentations, uh, of course, making music, the way you dress, the way you show up with your clients. It's all playful and meaningful, spontaneous, yet disciplined and life-giving to yourself as well as to those that it touches. It affirms the life within us because it is a healthy and enjoyable action. Um, next, creativity as a lifelong recovery. Okay, so I brought this up earlier, this creativity test. So, uh, there was this creativity test created. I wonder how many times I'm going to say creativity during this presentation. <laughs> um, a lot, probably. In 1968, George Land conducted a research study to test the creativity of 1,600 children ranging in ages three to five years old who were enrolled in a Head Start program. Um, and this was the same creativity test he devised for NASA to help select innovative engineers and scientists. The assessment worked so well, he decided to try it on children. He retested the same children at 10 years of age, again at 15, and the results were astounding. I get goosebumps every time I uh, talk about this study. 
So the test results among five years, years of age, 98% creativity, all right. The test results among 10 years old, 30%, that's what they, they averaged on the test. Test results among 15 year olds, 12%, and the same test given to 280,000 adults, 2%. So what Land concluded was that non-creative behavior is learned. Creativity is a part of us from when we are born. Um, and I mean, think about it with kids. Uh, kids are so open to new experiences. They are naturally curious um, and they have to be in order to discover, problem solve, learn and grow. But at some point, all children inevitably confront societal, cultural and institutional norms. And yep, you guessed it, the rules policies, restrictions, judgment, and all the boundaries that come with being a part of a society. So bring us back to this slide. Uh, now, of course, we need the rules, we need the structure. So I'm not suggesting changing societal norms, um, rather recovering that inner artist, that inner child that was lost in the process. And I mean, what do children do? They play a lot, a lot. And maybe take a second and think, like, when was the last time that I played? Hmm. All right, continuing on. Um, and lastly, another uh, creative truth. Creativity as a pursuit in well-being. Um, there was a recent study from the Journal of Positive Psychology that showed a connection between creative activities and increased positive emotions. Um, and this, the study suggested that doing creative things lessens depressive symptoms, stress, anxiety, which of course is gonna lead us to our main focus, the link between mental health and creativity. I love this picture. <sighs> Just someone taking a moment, all the colors and the possibilities within our imagination. Just possibility. So as we move into this uh, part of the presentation, we, we've, we've come to, to see that we are all creative from that lands creativity test. It's a part of our nature. Um, creativity isn't a phenomenon or a talent. It's really more of this exploration and engagement within ourselves and life. Um, a recovery of our inner playfulness, curiosity, and imagination. And it is possible. Uh, and this is healthy. Yet, of course, I had to go back to Google. Let's see. Let's see what Google says uh, when I look at creativity and mental health. So, another myth. Creativity and mental health, the myth of the mad artist. I was really, really surprised about this, how, how this often this came up. Um, creativity has, and mental health has this really long uh, history that has shaped societal ideas of artists. And one of the stereotypes that is out there is um, that creative genius is close to madness. It's impulsive. It's reckless. 
uh, artists are tortured and fragile. <sighs> and this is just not true. Um, so when looking at uh, the insanity hoax, exposing the myth of the mad genius, um, the author took a look at this supposed data on this. And really it came down to some case reports, anecdotal storytelling, but there was really no scientific data uh, supporting this, um, which of course is a stereotype. Um, now, while mental illness and creativity are not mutually exclusive, there is no proof that creativity causes mental illness or the reverse. It is simply an outdated trope. Um, of course, mental illness, unlike genius, is not a rare phenomenon. Um, many of us struggle with our mental wellness um, and suffer from mental illness. But yet, this idea of the impulsive, reckless, tortured, mad artist continues to be the strong stereotype and unfortunately keeps us from that true meaning of creativity. So moving on, let's get to the truth. So however, there is a clear link between creativity and the mentally well artist. And this just gets me smiling. So let's talk about flow. Technically, um, and you might have heard this term, experienced it yourself, um, technically flow is defined as an optimal state of consciousness where we feel our best and perform our best. In creative flow, the creator and the universe become one. I love that. Outside distractions recede from consciousness and one's mind is fully open and attuned to the act of creating. So there's that engagement element. Uh, when we are creating, we are engaging with ourselves and whatever we're choosing to interact with, the tools we choose to use. Um, now, while we're in this state of flow, there is very little self-awareness or critical self-judgment, that part. It's just intrinsic joy for the task concentration becomes laser focused and everything else falls away. Time may seem to speed up, slow down. And of course, it's incredibly healthy for your brain to participate in this. And maybe as I'm speaking about this, you're saying to yourself, yeah, I've experienced that before. Um, playing an instrument, uh, writing, imagining, um, just being so consumed with something in a way where you are showing up on the page, on the painting, um, in really anything that you're doing. So when this happens, our brain releases an enormous amount of norepinephrine, dopamine, endorphins, uh, and serotonin, which is increasing our focus, regulating our mood, fighting against anxiety, depression. And let's go to this next one, creativity, expression, and mood regulation. So it actually has this ability to modulate our emotions. Uh, a 2019 study revealed that participating in artistic creative activities has been shown to modulate emotions and influence our moods. Uh, and you'll notice that it says participating. It's not about creating the perfect creative activity, um, being an expert in it. Uh, it's simply showing up and that's it, showing up and being there. You can, t can reap these uh, amazing brain healthy rewards. And of course, expressing your feelings through drawing, writing, finger painting, uh, creating characters, collage, hitting a drum. There's so many different ways that you can do it and it can give us an opportunity to release tension, bring yourself acceptance and gain insight from what you're experiencing. Let's move on to some more truths. 
creativity as uh, coping with anxiety and stress, decreased cortisol. That stress hormone that we want to, to get rid of. So creativity is a way to cope with anxiety. It can create order and flow out of chaos, um, can give you a sense of control there was a recent study that had participants create anything they wanted. That's it. Create anything. And the scientists who did this study found that no matter the artistic experience of the participant, they didn't have to have a, a background in this. It didn't matter. About 75% of them experienced a decrease in their cortisol level, that stress hormone. So creative stimulation helps us engage, focus, and distract ourselves from feeling stress and anxiety. Creativity as coping with uh, depression. Um, it can help us get in touch with our feelings, uh, use creativity as an expression, uh, as a creative expression as an outlet. Um, there was a study done with patients suffering from chronic pain and depression, and they used creative writing, expressive writing, to channel their anger and regain a sense of meaning. All right, let's continue on. Creativity as a journey towards continued wellness. So here are some principles of creativity. So we have, uh, we've explored what creativity is, the links between it and mental wellness. We've addressed some of the myths and misconceptions. Um, so let's go a little further into ways that creati creativity can allow us to continue towards greater wellness and having our needs met. Safety. <sighs> yeah, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> Safety. It's so, so important to our lives. I mean, we, we can't move forward without a sense of safety. Um, and creativity can be that safe place. There's no right or wrong way to do it in creativity. It's a way to be just authentically, uniquely you. So also connection, being able to express ourselves brings us closer to our communities. It allows us to understand each other. And since we're all creative, that's something that we can connect on. We all have different ideas um, ways of being, different perspectives, and creativity can give us that channel and connection with others as we show up. Identity. Oh, man. Creativity is just so cool, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, it's a way that we can explore different facets, different parts of ourselves. There's so much, um, so like I said, there's safety in creativity, but there's also freedom. It is your choice. It, it doesn't matter what other people say about you or expect you to be. In creativity, it's really about you finding a new way, a new path, your own path connecting with your own dreams, desires, and meeting them with curiosity. Empowerment, yes. All the snaps for empowerment. <sighs> we all could use some more of that. And creativity can be that vehicle. It can channel the, the power of possibility. Um, influence, propelling you forward into the life you want to create. And in that, it 
kind of all becomes this beautiful metaphor, you know, finding your voice, um, writing the ending to your own story, painting the life that you want and the life you'll bring to others. The possibilities are completely endless and that is so exciting. Um, so I am definitely not the same person I was when I first started my own creativity journey. Um, I really used to be paralyzed by fear. I was a very black and white thinker, that polarizing, um, way that I was talking about earlier, having a fixed mindset. I'm, I'm not this, I'm not creative. It's either this or that, um, very pessimistic. Um, and while I still get afraid and I, and I still struggle, I am, I am not that same person. Um, creativity for me has allowed me to become more playful, more open-minded, um, curious, optimistic, it's led me personally to changing careers, going back to school, and being here in this moment with you right now, sharing it with you. Um, and of course, as I continue on in my life path and probably come against more struggles, um, I choose with creativity to meet them with gentleness, curiosity, acceptance and and hope so um just want to take a moment to share that for my personal personal journey that um i'm practicing what i preach and i really do do believe this and and continue to to move with it so we've gotten to the practical bit yes all right, practical ways to engage with creativity. So um, these first two on here, Morning Pages and the Artist Date, I got from this really great book called The Artist's Way. Um, and it is um, an accessible way to show up with yourself. Um, the morning pages, it is writing. Um, writing about three pages each morning for about 15 minutes before you start your day. Um, and the idea behind this is it's kind of like a, a brain, okay, I'll just say it, a brain dump. <laughs> it's a place for you to really show up and it can be anything. Like with creativity, there's no wrong way to do it. You can complain, um, share secrets, write down your worries, your successes, anything. And of course, keep it in a safe place so it's just for you. Uh, but it's a way for you to, to creatively process anything and everything. Um, so yeah, that is a way to, to start as well as something called the artist date, which is like taking yourself on a date, your creative inner child. Um, it's creating time for yourself to do something that nurtures that inner child, your inner artist. Again, no wrong way to do it. It could be a mindful walk, listening to music uninterrupted, uh, going to a new restaurant. It's like treating yourself well and paying attention to your creative inspirations. Um, I also have finding a creative community. Uh, there's a lot of um, research about that, that just being around others that are um, supportive um, that are creative themselves. Uh, and when I say that, that they're engaging with their own creativity because who we spend time with influences our actions. Are you spending time with those that inspire you, that get you 
thinking outside of your normal pattern, exploring new ideas. Um, are you with those that think differently? And of course, as a music therapy intern, I have to talk about music therapy for a moment. Um, music therapy is just so great, an amazing way for you to connect with your own self-expression through songwriting, instrument play, improvisation. Um, and of course, you don't have to be a musician or a singer, uh, just like music in some way. You can uh, participate in introspection through lyric analysis, looking at those songs that inspire you, musical mindfulness, um, connection through group processing, song sharing. And of course, if you are interested in receiving music or dance therapy services, you can contact us through our website, www.harmonicchanges.com. Um, all right, continuing on. So I have a little creativity, creativity. See, I lost it. I said it too many times. <laughs> Creative imagination activity. And you can choose to do this whenever you'd like to. Um, so it's called imaginary uh imaginary lives or wait i have 10 lives that's it <laughs> so i think that's what i'll do i'll tell you how to do it and then you can find some time to do this on your own as maybe a first step in creativity um or if you've had a long journey with creativity just another fun way to connect with your imagination and lead you to some fun and creative, um, more creative activities. So the idea is that you imagine that you could live 10 lives. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, what would you choose to be? So you take some time to, to write all of those down. And then once you have that list, find one activity that you would do in your imaginative life. So let's say you write down, I'd like to be a chef or a food critic. Maybe you plan an evening to cook something really special for yourself. Uh, do you want to be an explorer? Again, no wrong way to do this. Indiana Jones, Maybe you could try geocaching or going to a new museum and take notes on your findings. And again, this is just a way to, to branch out of our old patterns, try some new things, and of course, give us a boost in our mental wellness. So with that, I'll get to our conclusions. So, Creativity is a life-affirming force within all of us that simply needs to be recovered. Creativity is healthy, and the societal views of it must be challenged, as we did today. Creativity supports mental well-being by supporting our neurochemistry. As I was talking about that uh, serotonin, uh, norepinephrine. It also gives us an outlet to express a way to cope and promote a sense of safety, connection, identity, and empowerment. And lastly, the ways to engage with creativity include but are not limited to those morning pages, writing with yourself, morning for about 15 minutes just showing up on the page in whatever that comes out as taking yourself on that artist date finding a creative community those that think differently um, 
and support your own creativity. Uh, participating in music, dance therapy, as I brought up, and of course, meeting our inner artist with gentleness and compassion. So with that, thank you um, so much for your time, for being present and showing up today with an open mind, whether you're in person with us or watching this on our YouTube channel. Um, I will show you my resources where I found this information. But before I do, if you know someone um, or if you yourself could benefit from music therapy services, please do not hesitate to contact us at our website. You can also connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and I have my own Instagram as well, Shelby Music Therapy. Uh, if you enjoyed this presentation or it's inspired you, I would love to connect. And here come those resources. See if I can make it a little bigger. <laughs> and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We thank you for being here. Um, and we will have another open studio in 2022, the last Wednesday of January.